Hello, my name is Matt Gracie, and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. In this video, we're going to demonstrate ingesting logs from a PFSense or OpenSense firewall into your Security Onion deployment using an Elastic integration. While earlier versions of Security Onion included a parser that could identify and ingest PFSense traffic logs submitted via syslog, this newer methodology allows ingestion of all the logs produced by your firewall, including services like OpenVPN and DHCP. While this video is specific to PFSense log traffic, the same general methodology will work for any Elastic integration that you would like to enable and use to parse data in your environment. So whether you've got logs coming from an on-prem source like a firewall, or from a cloud service like AWS or Azure, you can use Elastic Integrations in conjunction with Security Onion to put all of that information in a single, unified interface and analyze it with the Hunt and Dashboard tools. For a current list of supported integrations, check out our documentation at securityonion.com docs. The first thing that we will do is enable the Elastic Integration for PFSense so that the agent installed on our Security Onion standalone server will listen for incoming traffic from our PFSense firewall. Then, we will update the host firewall configuration on our Security Onion server in order to accept that traffic. Finally, we'll configure PFSense to send the logs that we're interested in on the custom port that we've configured, and check and hunt to make sure that they're being properly received. Let's get started. As always, we begin by logging into the Security Onion console, or SOC, with the username and password that we established during installation. This brings us to the overview screen. Along the left-hand side of the web browser window, you'll see links to all the components that make up Security Onion. For today's exercise, we're interested in Elastic Fleet and also in this configuration menu under Administration. Let's start with Fleet. Elastic Fleet is a web console that controls the configuration of Elastic agents that you've deployed in your environment. At the very least, you'll see entries here for your Security Onion standalone node as well as one for the fleet server functionality on that node. If you have a distributed deployment, you'll see entries here for all of the minion nodes as well. Search nodes, forward nodes, receiver nodes, and so on. Each agent acts as a log packager and shipper, sending data into the ingestion pipeline and security onion to be parsed in Elasticsearch and stored for later analysis and retrieval. If you're familiar with the previous version of Security Onion, it's very similar to the purpose that FileBeat and the other beats served in that architecture. Each agent is assigned an agent policy. These policies are essentially lists of integrations, or directives of which logs to ingest and what to do with them. By default, your Security Onion grid will have a few of these already set up out of the box, including SO Grid Nodes General, which is assigned to all of the nodes in your grid by default, accepting Heavy and Fleet Nodes, which have their own policies, as you can see here. There's also an Endpoints Initial Policy, which is assigned to any endpoints outside of your grid that you install Elastic Agent on, such as a Windows Server or a Mac OS laptop. What we're going to do today is add the PFSense integration to the SO Grid Nodes General Policy, which means that the Elastic Agents running on our Security Onion Grid Nodes will be able to accept traffic sent via syslog from a PFSense firewall. To do that, we'll first click on that policy, then Add Integration, and then search for PFSense in the box here at the top. When we find the PFSense integration, we can click on it to continue. This will bring up a screen with some more information about the integration. As you can see, it will receive and parse logs from PFSense and OpenSense firewalls, including the basic firewall logs, Unbound, DHCP, OpenVPN, and so on. There's some information here as well on how to configure PFSense to send the logs. We'll walk through that process shortly. To add the integration, we can click on Add PFSense here in the upper right corner. And here we'll see some configuration information about the integration. We can name the integration whatever we like. This is just the name that will be used in the agent policy, so leaving it on the default will be fine. For syslog host, we want to set that to quad zero so that our security onion nodes listen on all their management interfaces for incoming traffic. And here, we want to note that the traffic will be expected on UDP port 9001. That will be useful in the next step when we set the host firewall on the security onion node to accept the traffic. Everything else looks good, 
So let's move down to the bottom and click Save and Continue. Now this change will update our agents that are already running the agent policy. We'll click Save and Deploy Changes to accept that and continue. And here you see that the PFSense integration has been added to this agent policy. So now anything in my Security Onion grid that's using that grid general agent policy should know that UDP traffic on port 9001 needs to be ingested as PFSense log traffic and parsed with this Elastic integration. Now, let's set up the appropriate host firewall rules as well. As with the other configuration options in Security Onion 2.4, the host firewall is now managed through the web interface. Specifically, we want to click on the configuration option here underneath administration to access the GUI for setting system options. We'll also want to enable the advanced options switch under options here, just to make sure that all the settings that we need access to are visible. Now all of the options that we want are under firewall, so let's click the triangle here to open that up. We're setting a custom host and port group, so we'll use the first ones in the list, custom host group zero and custom port group zero. If we had another integration that was already using these, we could use group one or two or three and so on. For custom host group zero, we're going to set the IP address that will be sending those PFSense logs to our security onion server, the inside interface on the PFSense firewall. In this test deployment, that's 192.168.1.1. We just type that into the box and hit the green check mark. Now for custom port group zero, as you may recall, the traffic is going to be coming in on UDP port 9001. So let's open this up. We'll put 9001 in the box and then hit the green check to continue. And finally, under roles, we need to say which node type should be expecting this traffic. In this case, we're sending it to our standalone. So we'll open standalone, chain, input, host groups, custom host group zero, and tell it for custom host group zero, we want to accept traffic from custom port group zero. And hit the green check to continue. Now we can push that configuration change into production by opening up options and pushing the synchronized grid button. So to recap, what have we done so far? We added an elastic integration to the SO grid nodes general policy telling the agents using that policy, that is the members of our security onion grid, to accept PFSense log traffic on port 9001 UDP. Then we use the configuration menu here in SOC to add a host group for our PFSense firewall, a port group for 9001 UDP, and to accept traffic from that host on that port on our standalone node. So the security on the inside of this configuration is complete. Now we just need to configure PFSense to send the logs and we should be all set. In PFSense, the log settings are stored under the status menu. Then system logs. And now we need settings over here on the far right side of the menu. Remote logging options are set down here at the bottom of the page. First, we want to send log messages to a remote syslog server, so we'll click on this box. We'll send from the LAN address because that's the one that we've allowed in the custom host group zero configuration option. IP protocol will stay on IP4, and then we need to put in the IP address of our security onion node along with port 9001. And we'll tell it to send everything and click Save to update the configuration. Now that's all we need to do in PFSense. We'll just wait a couple of minutes and confirm that the firewall logs are being properly ingested into Security Onion. So going back to the Security Onion console, if we open up Hunt, we see here we've got our default log type query. We can scroll down and we're now receiving logs for event.module PFSense. These are all going into a data set called PFSense.log. So let's include on that to add it to our query and see what we've got. If we want to break these down farther, we can. Let's open up one of these events and you'll see that there's a attribute here called process.name. This is actually the logging process that generated this individual event. If we want, we can group on this attribute with the stack of papers icon here on the left-hand side of the field name. 
scrolling back up, you'll see that the PFSense logs have now been neatly sorted into two groups. We've got filter log, which is the traffic filtering logs, and then we've got this PHP FPM, which is actually the administrative access of the web interface on the, on the box. If we want more information about that, we can click on this, include to add it to our query, and now we're just looking at the four events that came from that PHP FPM process. If we want a list of all of the events, we can scroll down to the message field here, click on the add or remove this column to add it to our column table, get rid of a couple of these columns that we're not really using at the moment, And you'll see over here, we've got the message column now, and we have a time delineated list of all of those particular logs. So admin account logged out, logged back in, updated the logging options, and then logged back out. You can use any of this data as a pivot, just like you can anywhere else in Security Onion. Now, you may also be interested in some of the built-in visualizations. So let's check that out in dashboards. By default, the firewall dashboard will display information ingested from PFSense as well. So if you open this up, if you're looking for top talkers, high level protocol stats, or what's getting blocked, this is a good place to start. And because these are all being ingested into the same Elasticsearch database on the back end as the other data in Security Onion, you can easily pivot from IPs or community IDs to Zeek, Suricata, or endpoint data giving you a holistic end-to-end -end view of all the traffic on your network. It's really a very powerful place to start your pivots. I hope you found this video useful and that it's helped to expand your understanding of how to ingest outside data into Security Onion and use it as part of your analysis. Remember, the same methodology that we use to add PFSense logs can also be used for any other log type that is supported by an Elastic integration, whether it's an on-prem network device or data from a cloud service. Security Onion can ingest and parse it so that you can leverage this additional intelligence in Haunter dashboards. If you'd like a list of the current integrations supported by Security Onion, or if you have specific questions about details that were not covered in this video, please check out our documentation at securityonion.com docs. If you're interested in our training options to learn more about the platform, please go to securityonion.com training. And finally, if you're having trouble getting this to work, or if you have other questions about the platform, please start a new thread on our community discussion forum at securityonion.com discuss. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day.